Hi everyone, I'm Melinda Gallant and we've got a great show for you today. And we are here in the downtown Sandwich People's Meeting Hall, the Sandwich Town Hall upstairs, this beautiful, beautiful restored space. So I'm gonna to talk to a very special person today. So come along, let's have a Cape conversation. I am sitting here with a real celeb from Sandwich, and that's what I think he is anyway. Um, and he's also a very nice gentleman that I have gotten to know over the past few years. I am here with Mr. Frank Panorfi, selectman. Are you, right. are you chairman? No. I am. You're chairman I, of this I thing? Am. Oh my gosh, should they I curtsy? They were crazy enough to appoint me chairman. Oh my golly. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize you were chairman. I guess obviously I'm not watching the programs <laughs> enough. I'm not attending the meetings. Um, so how's it going as chairman? It's, it's going well. It's yeah? going very well. Yeah. Very busy. No fisticuffs? Oh, no. no. I, I gave that up in my youth oh. about two or three years ago. <laughs> oh, two or three years ago. Okay. Well, that's true. What are you, maybe 45? Because I know yeah, I'm only that, about 40. Yeah. So. At least that. So. <laughs> so how long have you lived in Sandwich, Frank? Um, the history is this. Uh, we started vacationing here in 1980, mm -hmm. you know, with the children. And I fell in love with the place. Yeah. And it was actually the first time that I saw this building. You know, when right? I came around the corner, I keep telling you of know, Tupper Road, and I saw this thing in front of me. My wife said, your jaw dropped, you know. Then I made the left turn, and I saw a first church. She said, your jaw dropped again, you know. Uh, in 1989, we started looking for some land because we wanted to build right. a summer home. Yeah. And then we came up with this idea of not only building a summer home, but build it with the idea of retiring. And we built a home, moved into it, a summer home in 91. And we were living in Connecticut at the time. And um, where in Connecticut? Vernon, right off of 84. Oh, okay. Have you ever heard sure. of Ryan's Delicatessen? Yes. That's the town. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, I think I've eaten there because we uh, used to travel back and forth to Ohio a lot because okay. we had a lot of family okay. there at one yeah. time. And unfortunately, yeah. since they've all passed away and we don't go back as often, but we used to always take 84 down and then cut through Pennsylvania, you right. know, the Delaware Water Gap sure. and New Jersey sure. and all that area. So, sir, I'm very familiar. Good, so. good. So, yeah. so we moved here permanently in 99. We sold the house in uh, Connecticut. and. Uh, it's Were you retired at that point? I, or? I, I retired at 55. What yes. did you do? Uh, Were you like a well, multimillionaire or something? <laughs> and? I, was, I was successful. But <laughs> Not a multimillionaire. Okay. What did you do uh, though? Actually, when I graduated from college, I taught for three years in the New Jersey school system uh -huh. and quickly realized that if I wanted to send my kids to college, <laughs> you know, I, I got to get out of the teaching business. Right, so, right. so I went into the insurance business, not oh. sales, operations. I started out in the casualty area. Uh, after about four years, they asked me to go into group health. And the rest of my career, really, uh, 27 or so years after my initial three or four years start in the casualty, I was in the group health field. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, it was, Excellent. So I it's all those residuals, right? Yeah, so yeah, don't you I get wish. residuals? <laughs> no I residuals mean, when you're in operations. Only oh, in sales. I, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Um, it, it was a great career. I enjoyed it. I was, you know, happy to be able to. Um, retired 55 and I've been yeah. retired now for 14 years and I've enjoyed it. Now how many kids? Three my own children uh -huh. and three grandchildren. We have a new addition five yeah. weeks old. And the name is? Max Timothy Cunningham but oh. as I keep telling folks he's still half Italian. Yeah. Even with that name. <laughs> With the name of Cunningham. <laughs> yeah. You got to point that out that he's still Italian. Well, I have a Max, too. Max is our interesting children, yeah. fun they? children. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. We well, love I, I happened to see him yesterday. I met my daughter. I had to drop my wife off. She's going to spend some time. And I noticed that his, since I saw him a week ago, his cheeks have gotten chubbier. Is so. that right? <laughs> That's a good sign. That's a good sign. So you have uh, three children. Uh, three children, uh, all married. Uh, boys, girls. You uh, obviously have a daughter. Girl, boy, girl. Oh, uh, wonderful. Yes, uh, three grandchildren, two girls, the new boy. Oh, so wonderful. Nobody's happier than me. Oh, uh, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. And your wife, does she continue to work or is she retired No, as she's well? been retired, but she volunteers. Does uh, she? She does a lot of volunteer. We do meals on wheels. Oh, wow. Uh, also, oh, my God, you'll be coming to my house soon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she also volunteers at the West Barnstable Cancer Thrift Shop. Oh, wonderful. And she does work for the Chamber at the Visitors uh, Center oh, uh, great. one day a week. Uh, great. That's now closed down for the winter. And, right, and all. right. So, yeah. Well, now, aren't they looking into moving a building or trying to get Clark oh, Cadet yes. Hall? Or, <laughs> yeah. 
build something. I, I you know, I, I do get my sandwich enterprise yes. faithfully, yes. and and it's, and it's one of that. the many things uh, yeah. that uh, the town, the board of selectmen, are dealing with the Clark Haddad building, right. and what's going to happen to it. You know, right. uh, I actually well, did a play in there uh, in 1985. We did Prisoner of Second Avenue. It was being used by the school on the weekend. We literally had a group of people that moved all the desks and everything out of their main, brought in uh, risers, and had a, a small st platform stage right. with risers, so the, the audience was on risers. And we did Prisoner of Second Avenue there, to rave reviews, I, by the way. I, and I played the wife, so. Oh, okay, I yeah. never heard that that Yeah, was it had for been that, used so. for that. Uh, Glass Town players had done that. Well, good. And good. the town was just like, oh, sure, you can do that. I can't imagine trying to move anything anywhere now without some sort of committee <laughs> yeah. looking over your shoulder. But, uh, and I don't mean that in a mean way, I just no. think times have changed. Uh, but it was really great fun, and, and the, the school committee was fabulous about good. it, and they were, and was the superintendent at that point was in there. Oh, okay. Isn't that funny? Yeah, that, and that and they were quite happy to do it. Well, was was it Peter Canoni at the time? Uh, no. Well, and you know what? Maybe it wasn't. The, maybe it was um, Elder Services was in there. I think oh, maybe that's okay. what was in okay. there at yeah. that time. It was Elder Services. Okay. Because well, then the school committee came in. Well, now you that. have this building to do all your. your I shows know, with. <laughs> which is pretty. And we're doing a show here. Did I you know, know? I know that. You know, I know they wanted you to sing. Uh, the, you know, yeah. the open meeting law song or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it's November fifth and sixth. Just to yes. put a plug in there. But yeah, pa Patrick uh, sent me an email and asked him. I said, well, I polled some of the selectmen, and they said they would be happy to do something else other than sing. <laughs> so. Well, maybe we'll find something else yeah, for you to do. Right. You, know, you never know. You never know. Uh, I can hand out cards or something like there, that. There, yeah, to guess, so. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So um, you moved here in 1989. 99. Not, uh, 90, 99. 99. I'm sorry. Right. You moved. You came in 1989 uh, on vacation. You know, it's that is such a common story about Cape Cod. Once you get the sand in your shoes, oh, no, you're no, you're no you're done. Yeah, I mean, you're done. You're. Yeah. I mean, it's like a, a given that you have to move here. Yeah. Um, I, of course, I always find it interesting because once you raise children here, they all want to go away. <laughs> <laughs> so, although mine are all close by, but you know, they do. They all want to go, you know, to other parts of the, the world. And I, but I think a lot of that has to do with our economy, don't I'm you? I'm trying to get them all to move to Massachusetts. I've been successful twice. Well, one more to go. <laughs> well, uh, we have one in Rhode Island too. We have one here on the Cape, which oh, is quite okay. amazing. That's good. And then we have one in the South Shore, and then we have one in Rhode Island. Well, so I enjoy, I enjoy having my family around. Oh, I know. Don't so, don't we all? Yeah, it's just fabulous. When, when my it's grandchildren great. come down here, the two girls, the first thing they want to do is go down to the beach because we live on the bay side and close to the water. Oh yeah, so yeah. Grab everything, go yeah, to the beach. Yeah, you know, so. and it's easy. And it is. You know, very it's much. it's yeah. it's great entertainment, and you don't have to do yeah. anything. <laughs> and that's it's what's good cheap, about too. it's cheap yeah. entertainment. I, I'm with you there. So you moved here in 1999. What got you started to think about running for selectman? Well, it's, it's interesting. Um, I was watching, uh, I'd go to the meetings mm -hmm. and I'd read stuff in the newspaper and I said, I don't like the way things are going. Well, there you, know? you go. And um, I, I didn't see any long range planning at the time. Mm -hmm. It was like immediate problem solving, let's deal with the issue. Which you have to do, obviously. I mean, putting out fires? Yeah, it's constantly. Now, you was playing the, firemen. Was the, was the board a full-time board at that time? It was a full-time oh, elected board, five uh -huh. members of the board, you yep. know. And, uh, I'm sorry. And, and they had their hands full. Yeah. I mean, there was no yeah. question about it. I said, you know, I have a different perspective coming out of the corporate world on how to do <laughs> things, you know. And I said, maybe You mean you actually have to get things done. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. You know, you want a paycheck, you got to have some sort of successes right, that's that go right. along with it. So uh, yeah. I said, maybe I can run for selectman. And I talked to some friends and stuff, and they said, sure, go ahead, you know. Sure. And um, I was fortunate the first time I ran, uh, I wow. got elected. Second time I ran, I lost. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, and that was the year I said, oh, I'm a shoe in you know. <laughs> <laughs> Never believe your own Never publicity, that Frank. Publicity. That's, That's true. That's the number one issue. <laughs> so uh, I lost. But the following year, 
uh, Bill Dietering decided not to run for re-election. Uh -huh. There was one seat at that time uh, that was open, and uh, I thought about it, and I decided to run. And I was re-elected and served another three-year term. Uh -huh. And then uh, when I was up for re-election, again, I decided not to run, and I stayed away from it for two years. Yeah, I knew in, you were in, off in, the board for In May for of 2009, yeah. I decided not to run. and. Uh, but this past May of 2011, I said I had the itch again. <laughs> you know? so, uh oh, you've and been watching those, you know? those sandwich casts of the selectmen's meetings right. and attending. And yeah, it, but it wasn't really, uh, I was dissatisfied with what mm -hmm. they were doing. Um, I'm saying I still have. I enjoyed it. It's as simple yeah. as that. I really people think I'm crazy when I tell them that. <laughs> you know, well, uh, maybe but I, I do. I you know, and I think. Um, I do a decent job at it, I think, but I think people recognize I had certain skills that I thought I could bring. Not everybody likes what you do, obviously. Right. You don't go right. in with the saying, you know, everybody loves me, I'm wonderful, right. that kind of thing. Right. But right. you go in there with a purpose, and you go in there with determination, right. and you try to accomplish something for the better betterment of the town. Sure. So, and that sure. should always be the objective. So. Sure, sure. So you right. have to think of the, the town as a whole, not just certain segments of the town you, or certain you, you cannot, the, the squeaky wheel that's always squeaking you can't um, continually just sometimes, try to appease sometimes them. Sometimes the squeaky wheel should never be greased quite yeah. honestly. Yeah, uh, I, I can actually has, see that. You yeah. know, uh, yeah. I'll give you a specific example. The last board in dealing with the pay as you throw. It was a very courageous thing for them to say, we don't have to bring this to town meeting to get their approval on it. Right. You know, and some people wanted that done, and not everything has to go to town meeting, quite right. honestly. It was perfectly within their authority. Right. And I think that decision has proven them right, because oh. pay as you throw, in spite of some of the earlier uh, initial problems right. and some of the finding the bags was yeah, the biggest yeah, problem well, finding the bags <laughs> or tearing bags you know we all had yeah. the tearing bag problem which has been resolved for the most part um, was a courageous thing to do on their part because sure. I think it's proven to be a very successful program right. and by January of 2012 uh, Paul Tilton director of DPW yeah. will give us some data to try and determine whether it was a successful right. program right. Or not. well so. certainly uh, my husband has the older car Right. And the, the not as nice car, so yeah. he has to go to the dump. Yeah. I used to drive a tr like a truck, and I always went to the dump. <laughs> uh, and what he, you know, he is, has experienced now is the fact that there's nobody there, because a lot That's of people true. went ahead and got pickup. You yeah. know, they went to the to the various operators that do yeah. trash hauling, uh, which is kind of interesting to him is that there aren't the long lines now. Um, that they I, were I, there. I have a hard time understanding why people would be willing to pay three or four times more than it would cost them. But I guess the idea of not having to come there anymore and having somebody pick, you know, right. only pay for that service, right. which is fine. We're um, trashy people, so yeah. we have a lot of trash. <laughs> I think we would be, be in the bottom of it. We'd look like the hoarders. Our basement would yeah, look well, like the hoarders or something. Yeah, we didn't familiar. go once or twice a week, so. <laughs> Uh, so, so but, but it's, it's working it. out very well. Well, that's so, great. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really good thing. So now, on a personal level, so this is what you kind of do as a, you know, I mean, you're retired, so yes. uh, it's not just keeping you busy. I mean, obviously, you have a passion for working with the town and within the community and volunteering for the community. Uh, but you have passions for other things, too, I would imagine. Well, I do. And the, my first passion are my grandchildren. Of course. My second passion is my woodworking, yeah. you know. I have a shop at home, which I, whenever I want to get away, I go in and build what I call my birdhouses. That's, that's a metaphor, you know. <laughs> right, right. Although occasionally I build birdhouses yeah. for my grandchildren. Yeah. But I enjoy that. It, uh, it's, it's relieving. It's satisfying. Sure. It's a sense of accomplishment. Uh, you know, there, there are goals. There are problem solving. It's, it's very similar to being wow. a selectman, interestingly enough. Well, now, you know, we should tell everybody, do you do anything that, you know, that might be saleable? I mean, should we look for you at an arts and crafts fair with mm. bowls or <laughs> exotic? Bird houses no, or no, 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 that Alfred Glover kind of <laughs> things, you know, with you know arrows pointing different directions. That's that's not my that's, interest. I got you. Um, okay. You know, I, I I have in fact helped some friends, you know, with projects and stuff like oh, that. Great. I enjoy that. Uh, and I, one of the things you did was the piano in this building. My, myself and some several other folks. Yeah. So we worked on the piano. It was in my shop for a year, oh, and yeah. uh, it, it it was a great project, you know, yeah. and it came out 
wonderfully. I oh, think, it does. You know? It did. It um, certainly did. Know, John Shaw showed up every day. Dave Merrill showed up every day, and others from the committee sure. showed up periodically. That's you know? great. But uh, when I saw Dave Merrill walk in with his exacto knives and special equipment from veneering, <laughs> I said, "I've got a winner here." Yeah, <laughs> so, this guy knows what he's doing, this guy right? Knows what he's doing. That's great. That's really wonderful. Well, it's you know I've gotten to to perform in this space, um, and I know this was one of your babies, the, getting this whole thing redone. Uh, were you chairman of that committee? No. Um, I know it was a great it, it, group. It was Bud's committee. It was Bud's committee. Uh, Bud okay. put the committee yeah. together. Uh, when, um, when I was on the board of selectmen, he had asked me if I wanted to participate. And then yeah. he picked some folks from outside the elected. In fact, when I left in 2009, he kept me on that committee. Um, and, and, you know, the rest is, you know, it's, it's, we're celebrating. We just celebrated our first anniversary of the dedication. I know. You were the chairman of the I know. I was, I was very fortunate to do that. For which I thank you. Believe well, me. Well, thank you. I, you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You had to it. deal I with all it. those type A personalities. <laughs> really? The I did. There wasn't a single one on that rededication <laughs> com committee that I know of. Um, it, was a, it was a great honor to be able to do it. Did There's a great no job. doubt. I mean, that's you know, um, And we look what we have to show for it, Absolutely. right? I mean, a lot of hard work through the community yeah. Yeah. and a lot of money. I mean, people took a giant um, leap of faith. They did and yeah. said, you know, yes, we think this is worth saving. And, and I'll be honest with you, too often I think, um, and we've actually had this conversation a long time ago uh, when, we've, when I first went on to the committee, too often people want to throw it away. Yeah, okay, fine, it's falling down, we can't keep it, we can't do anything with it. Yeah. Let's throw it away. Yeah. I, I interviewed uh, Patrick Ellis on, on um, his little river, at his little River Street house okay. that used to be the bakery in town, right. and he's refurbishing it now. Right. And we talked about that. And it, it is true that in many parts of the country, and I just came back from California, where, you know, the oldest thing out there is 1840. I mean, yeah. you got, oh, you got the Spanish, certainly you have the Spanish influence. Yeah, sure. uh, uh, but in the San Francisco area, because of the earthquake of 1902, so many things were destroyed. But they still kind of had that mentality. Yeah. Um, and in the town where my sister lives, they were refurbishing a building and they got it through some sort of preservation act money and the townspeople literally were standing we, i went to starbucks i walked okay. to starbucks which she lives in the community so you can walk around and it's beautiful and you i walked to starbucks and across is this building and there were people standing outside the fence so my sister had gone to do something and she so she met me at the starbucks and i said why are those people standing there staring she goes everybody comes and watches the workmen because it's this old building that was built in 1845 or something in okay. this and in the middle of nowhere at that time yep. and now they're refurbishing it to be a community center and all these other things and the people are so enthralled with the workmen and oh, you know and, and the restoration process and i just thought you know that's what it's about yeah. it's not throwing away don't throw don't throw us old people away <laughs> and don't throw away old buildings let's let's try to figure out how you reuse them well, you, you mentioned Patrick Ellis uh, back in 2000, approximately six months after I had moved here. Uh, Patrick tried to get some $650,000 from the town to fix the second floor. And I called him that day and I said, what are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want to fix an old building? You know, and he and I spoke for 45 minutes, okay, oh. and uh, had a great conversation. Yeah. He turned me completely around Right. And I was a believer in saving this. I've always been interested in historical sure. preservation. I just thought at that time that this building it was would a cost a fortune to right. fit. It did cost a lot of money. Right. But the way we restored this building from the ground up, this building has lasted 176 years before we did anything to it. It'll last 400 years now, right, I think right, so. Right. But uh, you know, it's it, it was a great project, no yeah. question. Yeah, and, and and it is a it is a wonderful, wonderful space, and it'll be nice. It's nice that there are selectmen's meetings here, and there are other meetings here. And I, you know, I know that the library has done some things here as a well. A lot of stuff. Yes. And I and that's the way it should be. Right. It should be. It sh it's the people's meeting hall. So it, it was my it biggest should. fear that uh, we do all of this restoration, save this beautiful building and then it would never be used. And right, it's turning right. out to be just the opposite. It's being used a lot, and there's still time you know, available for others to sure. use this building as sure. well. Sure, so. Now, the town has a lot of spaces. 
I mean, you do. I mean, you yeah. own Sandwich Hollows, yeah. which is, you know, uh, a, a good or a bad thing. And then you own out the, um, this, uh, out in South Sandwich, uh, where the town offices used to be. The, what, what was that called? Um, the, um, you mean this, this South Sandwich Village? No, uh, I, well, the, that's coming up. Oh, Oak Crest. Thank oh, you. Oak Crest yes. Cove Oak, property. Oak Crest right. Cove. Yeah. You own that, and okay. which is, yeah. you know, which is uh, a fabulous, God, fabulous space where the town offices were while this was being that's, renovated. It's a gem. Um, a gem. And well, the town owns over three thousand acres of land, most of which Isn't is conservation wonderful? land. Isn't that wonderful? So it is. It's very much. We we were fortunate with the um, the old Agilent property, which mm -hmm. we now call Oak Crest Cove. Right. Right. You know, I was trying to think of Agilent. I Agilent, couldn't. Yeah. I almost said Agway, but I knew that wasn't it. Well, the Agilent people gave us kind of first right of refusal. They came to us. Really? And we did some haggling with them. It, it yeah. wasn't a property that you could pay for through the CPA Act. Right. You couldn't do that simply because it was not virgin territory, so to speak. I see. You know, there was a lot. Yeah. So we financed it uh, through different means and uh, right. you know, through a debt exclusion. And now uh, we're going to be wrapping up, but you you mentioned South Sandwich Project. South Sandwich Village. South Sandwich Village. Now, what is that going to be? That's the old property that's known as the Golden Triangle. Oh yes, it's I always, you know, I've always made fun of that term. <laughs> and, and, I, and because this is public access, I will tell you, it always sounded like something from a love novel to me, <laughs> you know? And I don't go any further than that, but I, I just said, why would they call it that? Call it something else, business improvement area, anything. But, and I, of course, obviously, I, I have really fine reading tastes if I'm reading love <laughs> novels, you know? But needless to say, the pirate swoops in. So um, are the pirates gonna swoop in and save the Golden it, Triangle? It, it is <laughs> one, it's one of the targeted areas. Yeah. Uh, it was number one on our list, but then with the formation of the SEIC and a lot of work that they've done, sure. and very positive stuff, right. it's kind of switched to... Is Tim to, Cooney on that? T Tim is. Is he yes. chairman? No. Uh, he's not. He's vice chairman. Vice or, chairman. Actually, okay. he's vice president. Oh, he's vice president. The, That's the right. The title's it's a, corp a president yeah. and it's a corporation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the work has been, uh, time's been spent on the Sandwich Industrial Park with the idea of putting in a road there to open up some of the uh, land that's available to right. developers. Uh, that's kind of moving along slowly and we're trying to revert back now to the South Sandwich Village. We're hoping that by the spring we'll have a request for a proposal out for that particular property that's as great. well. We're great. being approached by a lot of people that have expressed some interest. E so. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So a lot of things ha are happening. Well, the problem is the economy took a sure. downturn yeah, and we're kind of sitting around waiting. Although I will tell you, as compared to other parts of the country, yeah. Massachusetts is hanging in there. Yeah, we're only at you about know? seven and a half percent of whatever right. that number is. We're fortunate. Yeah, that. very fortunate. You know, we're lucky. Um, than, than a lot of other areas of the country. Right. And it's probably because of all the good job work you do here in is, Sandwich. Is that what it is? Yes, sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but um, I just want to, you know, it's just such a pleasure pleasure to be able to sit down and talk with you. Oh, it's you fine. know, Thank you. I, I, I think a lot of people, you know, you're a selectman. They may see you on, on you know, on, on the show, or they may see you at town meeting. Um, and there are those vocal folks who just feel like they can walk up and talk to you, or probably call you. Unless your phone number is unlisted, which it probably no, it's is. Not. <laughs> I, I would have one if I were you, but that's another thing. You might have a wacko like me calling you. But um, I, I just think it's nice that people get to know who you are. And, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't realize that you were now the, the chairman of selection. Right. I was being kind of funny, but I, I, I'm glad you. Well, I, I appreciate that's great. that you asked me to come on and so that we were able to talk about a few things that are going on in town. There's a, there's a lot going on. There is. So if there you want is. to ever invite me back again, I'd be happy to come. All right. Okay. All right. Well, and I will do that. That's right. for sure. We'll do, we'll, do it, we'll do it after you the next election and, and okay. when you get on again, when you decide to keep doing this. Well, I've right? got two more years to serve. Two and oh, a half yeah, years that's true. Serve, so that's true. I, I you haven't you been on that long. Wait that long. No, no. Back. Oh, gosh, no. But we're lucky to be in this beautiful space. We are. That's, we are. that's for sure. And fortunate. I thank you, thank you for making sure that this got going along with people like Patrick Ellis and others. Right. So good You're to welcome. see you. Thank, thank you, sir, for joining me. It. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining me today. And wasn't it a great conversation with Frank Panorfi? I didn't realize he was chairman of the selectmen. That just goes to show I need to spend more time on my civics. There's no doubt about it. But anyway, we had a great time. It was interesting talking to him. And I can't wait till the next time we talk with you again. So come along, join me for my next Cape Conversation.